from the state of the art UBC studios in Kampala. This is news tonight. Hello there and welcome to News Tonight. This is the 11th day of January 2018. Hello there and welcome to the program. My name is Edward Rukidi Kijana Ngoma. And I'm Patricia Lokoma. Thank you so much for joining us. Jonan Opori will be joining us shortly on the Sign Language Desk. And let's get started. Now the Governor Bank of Uganda, Professor Emmanuel Tumsime Mutebide, has been held for his excellent service to the country. He is credited for Uganda's current macroeconomic stability, a role that he has played for over 30 years. Now, this was during the opening of Professor Emmanuel Montevideo Center of Excellency Dialogue, which was presided over by Prime Minister Dr. Ruhakana Rugunda at Marriott Naguru Skies Hotel in Kampala. The dialogue was held under the theme, Three Decades of Economic Reforms in Uganda, Building Base for Wealth and Job Creation. It aimed at highlighting achievements of Uganda's economic reforms and to inform government programs, such as Operation Wealth Creation, on salient issues that need attention. The Prime Minister said Mutevide's contribution to defining the current Uganda's economic growth strategy, liberalization, industrialization, and regional integration cannot be underestimated. Therefore, looking at the centre with high expectations because it has the ability to bring government, the private sector uh, together, and the academia together. Quite often, our good ideas have not had synchrony. We have not been able to bring them together in order to come up with really good solutions. I think this centre. Is right to fix that gap that may have been in our country. So, with these remarks, I declare open to the Senior Mutabile Center uh, business there. The Tumsime Mutabile Center of Excellency was set up by Makere University Private Sector Forum. It is a new hub for providing transformative and alternative solutions for private sector growth and employment creation in Uganda. The keynote speaker at the dialogue was Dr. Donald Kaberuka, a Rwanda economist and former president of the African Development Bank. This is provide an adequate answer to it. For me, I want to answer it in the following way. Today, African countries has challenges that no longer fully respond to all solutions. We have a whole range of centrifugal forces that have led to a vortex of complex problems that require fresh, fresh input. Again, as the Prime Minister was saying, fresh thinking by everyone, business, government, academia, across Africa. The dialogue was organized by Makere University Private Sector Forum and Bank of Uganda. This report was compiled by Michael Mgera for UBC News. Police has arrested one of the masterminds behind killings of people in greater Masaka region. 
Speaking to UBC TV spokesperson Emilian Kaima said that Mohamed Kidawalime uh, was intercepted along Lake Albert as he tried to flee the country. Now he noted that police have intensified countrywide operations to avert such crimes as we hear in the following report. We are happy to inform Ugandans that uh, our hand for the prime suspects, for the key suspects in the murders in Bukoma and Simbi and Rwengo has been successful. One of the key suspects by the name of Muhammad Chidawalime, a young man in his 20s, has been arrested this morning uh, on Lake Albert trying to go probably then Congo or Sudan. He's being brought back to Masaka to face the full wrath of the law. This one is arrested and some other three, including the prime suspect in all of this, Musa Gariwango, who are on remand. And we want to thank everyone, everyone who got involved in this and more so, the Inspector General of Police who gave uh, strategic guidance in the hand and of course in the search for justice. The promise by the Uganda Police Force is to continue uh, serving Ugandans and protecting them. Of course, there are others out there whom we are looking out for and we are sure it's just a matter of time and we shall find them and they will face the law equally as these are going to face this full wrath of the law. That was police spokesperson Emilie um, uh, Nakaima. And of course, they are highlighting uh, the police arrests of those uh, masterminds behind the Greater Massacre murders. Now, moving on, opposition parties have launched a campaign to awaken citizens on their rights. Addressing the press in Kampala, former President Forum for Democratic Change Party, Dr. Kiza Vesija says the purpose is to help citizens get focused on matters of national development. We have details. By the end of 2017, opposition political parties announced they would reverse actions by the members of the 10th Parliament of amending Article 102B of the Constitution on presidential age limit. The article is no longer in the constitution after parliament passed the bill and the president assented to it on 27th December last year. Opposition parties that include Forum for Democratic Change, Democratic Party and Conservative Party want to engage citizens on fundamental democratic rights. Former president, Forum for Democratic Change, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besige, says there is need to deepen opposition party networks. These representatives that betrayed people are going to remain a subject for isolation and uh, total rejection. Them socially, politically, socially isolate them. Isolate them economically. On the other hand, Lord Mayor Elias Rukwago says, according to Article 3 of the Constitution, it is legitimate for citizens to defend the Constitution. All citizens of Uganda shall have the right and duty at all times to defend the Constitution, but specifically about defense in Part B is to do all in their power to restore this Constitution after it has been suspended, overthrown, abrogated, or amended, contrary to its provisions. The opposition also is concerned with land grabbers and ensuring representation at local council level. A few months or weeks to come, if this is not resolved, we should be carrying out our elections ourselves. We have supreme powers under a supreme constitution. They can undo anything which has been badly done by parliament. Meanwhile, opposition party representatives attribute the persistent murders in the country to a dysfunctional security system. They also allege that the country cannot meet its needs due to an economic crisis. I'm Navka Farida and Gloria Gwitabinji reporting. 
On to the August House now, where Parliament has emerged among top government institutions with improved compliance with gender and equity requirements of the Public Finance Management Act of 2015. An assessment of the budget framework paper for next financial year indicates that compliance levels by legislature improved 68% down from 63% in the financial year 2017-2018. Equal Opportunities Commission conduct and conducted an assessment of a total 17 sectors. We have details. It was a moment of sharing truth put on paper and ink on how various sectors of government have eliminated discrimination by ensuring a just, fair and equitable distribution of the national cake. Equal Opportunities Commission delegation, headed by Chairperson Sylvia Tambi, handed over assessment findings on compliance to the sector budget framework papers with gender and equity requirements for financial 2018-19 to Deputy Speaker Jacob Olanya. The compliance report, compiled in fulfillment of the requirements of Section 9 of the Public Finance Management Act of 2015, indicates a general improvement by the sectors. Assessment by the Equal Opportunities Commission, focused on sector contribution to second national development plan, sector objective, past performance, medium-term plans, ensuing year, and gender and equity challenges. Development and distribution of gender and equity guidelines is another factor attributed to the registered improvement. The 2018-2019 budget call, circular, was delivered to the respective accounting officers together with gender and equity guidelines which were attached. Social development maintains a top spot on improved compliance followed by health, education and the legislature. The five percentage point improvement by the legislature is hinged on the construction of new chambers. The new chambers to address the equity concern of limited space for legislators, rehabilitation of parliament, and making it more accessible to all, and the construction of a breastfeeding space for lactating mothers. Nevertheless, concerns are cited about public perception on the roles of an MP, delayed enactment of laws, and inadequate inclusive public consultations to include views of all. Deputy Speaker Jacob Olanya has this in response. It's not that there is no law, but it's a process of trying to harmonize and consolidate all laws into one. The laws are there. The laws are actually there. So I, I don't want us to, to think that by not passing the marriage and divorce law or the human rights uh, enforcement law, there is therefore a gap. There is no gap in legislation. Although there is a general improvement with gender and equity compliance, serious concerns are cited in regards to works and transport sector with which Uganda National Roads Authority takes a lion's share of allocated resources but only manages 15% of the roads in the country the remaining bulk left for the districts. But what is what, what what do you see about these things? You see, yes, Yundra is there, 25, 21,000 kilometers, yes, 15 percent, yes. What about the 85 percent? And that's where everybody lives. The communities we are talking about that you want to provide equal opportunities to are in this 85 percent of the road network. How do we tilt the balance to deal with this particular? Okay, particular issues. Other concerns relate to health sector budget cut from 1.85 trillion to 1.71 trillion, yet challenges remain enormous. Education sector is cited to have nothing aimed at uplifting performance levels in eastern region, currently with the worst performance. Overall, Karamoja is discriminated than any other sub-region, bit about programs targeting elderly persons, drought-resistant crops, are not provided by the agriculture sector to the semi-arid area as a matter of priority. Onyango Jackson, reporting for UBC TV, at Parliament. Well, thank you so much, Onyango Jackson, there. And now it is from that very story that we pick our topical discussion up next in our guest corner with Kija Edward. Stay with us. <laughs>
Welcome back from that guest a corner break, of course, and there is a gender equity where promotion of equal opportunities is guaranteed. Now, moving on to other stories, the City Hall Court has sentenced six uh, six people accused of spraying harmful chemicals on meat and fish to eight months imprisonment. Uh, the butchers include Isma Mutebi, Arias Akafumba, Isa Sednoga, Umar Kalyango, Beka Morondo, and Ibrahim Sekito. The group had confessed to the charge when they appeared in court on Friday last week. When they appeared yesterday, three of them demanded that the charges be read to them afresh which led to trial magistrate Beatrice Kainza to postpone to today. The group was arrested last week from Nakasero, Nankulavie and Tinder Markets in an operation carried out by KCCA Health and Law Enforcement Officers together with the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. They were arrested with insecticides, meat and fish which contained chemicals that were harmful to humans. To Ntungamo District now, where low voter turnout characterized the early morning voting in Ruhama by elections in Ntungamo District. Now, four candidates are facing off with three independents and one uh, are representing the NRM, and that is the ruling party. Now, results are expected to be uh, declared before midnight uh, this Thursday, as we hear in this report. <laughs> <laughs> to Hama parliamentary by elections in Dungamu district, whose results are expected to be delivered any time from now, started early morning on Thursday. The voter turnout was low in the morning. Everything is here. For us, we are ready, but we are still waiting the voters. Some people attribute these two threats while others to farmers choice to first accomplish their domestic work in the morning. In the beginning, the turn up started very low in the morning hours, simply because uh, the biggest population here, uh, people are farmers, others are herdsmen. I think they had to do the milking first. Uh, preparing their millet out for sunshine, doing that and the other. The Electoral Commission delivered the voting materials in time. Voting in most polling stations started on time. By press time, the voting process was peaceful with no chaotic incidents registered. Four candidates are facing it off in the by elections, three of whom are independent candidates. That include Engineer Mubangizi Jackson, Penina Beino Mugisha, Vastin Oreshawa, and NRM's Moses Kahima Mugabe. However, according to the early vote count, the race is tied between the NRM candidate Mugabe and the independent candidate Engineer Mubangizi. <laughs> I'm sure even with all this reading, our support will prevail and we win the vote. I'm still optimistic. Ruhama constituency, formerly represented by the First Lady Janet Museveni, has eight sub-counties and three town councils, 199 polling stations and over 166 voters, making it the biggest constituency in the country. <laughs> Philip Aguta reporting. <laughs> Philip Aguta with that report there, of course, from Rohama in the by-election there. And, of course, CRTBC TV will give you the results as we get them. Business news is up next here on UBC uh, TV. Of course, this is news tonight. Patricia Lukoma will be giving you that in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back from that short break and this is news tonight here on UBC TV.
time now for us to have that topical discussion in our guest corner and of course in our, uh, one of the stories that we've just had uh, before the break, uh, the gender, uh, sorry, parliament uh, emerging among top government institutions uh, with improved compliance with gender and equity uh, requirements of the Public Finance Management Act of 2015. And uh, we're privileged this evening to be joined by none other than uh, Mr. Jemba Evans, uh, who is the Principal Compliance Officer, Equal Opportunities Commission. Uh, Good evening and welcome to the program. It is my pleasure to be here. And of course, this okay. is being your first time in this state of the art studio. <laughs> yes. Welcome, nevertheless. And of course, this is very, very interesting and uh, you know, good news in as far as Parliament is concerned, of course, uh, about gender equality. However, some people would like to know, um, I mean, what does gender equality uh, in the perspective of the Commission entail and um, actually imply? Uh, maybe in brief and in, in, the interest of, in the interest of the listeners, when you look at gender, equality, we don't look at only gender equality. It is gender and equity. Mm -hmm. And it is not all about women, but it is all about every Ugandan. So we look at uh, the various commitments of government to ensure that they don't leave out any person, regardless of whether you are poor, regardless of whether you are youth, regardless mm -hmm. of whether you stay in a hard to reach place, regardless of the, fact, of, of the fact that whether you stay in a rural place, regardless of the fact that whether you are an, an older person or any other kind of dimension. Mm -hmm. So those are the very various dimensions that we look at and we want a development that is inclusive, that takes care of the different needs of the different categories of people. So it is not all, it is not all about women, but every Ugandan, wherever they are situated. Mm -hmm. Okay, th that's very interesting, but also one may probably would like to know what, uh, what, how, how is the commission actually able uh, to know from the, you know, the budget uh, framework paper uh, that is to address gender issues or not? Like when you look at the various commitments that have been made globally, even by the country, starting from the sustainable development goals, which have been incorporated into our national development plan too, uh, the various sectors clearly highlighted the commitments of gender and equity that they are going to be addressing over a given period of time. Mm -hmm. And even good enough, most of these commitments date back from the time when NRM took over power. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the 10-point program, almost 60% of the 10 points were actually focusing on addressing the concerns of gender and equity. Even when you look at the recent uh, frameworks, like for example, the NRM manifesto, and even these very sectors, when you look at their sector development plans. So as the Equal Opportunities Commission, basically our job mm -hmm. is to make an extract of the various commitments that, that government has made in the various frameworks to ensure that they are actually acted upon and the, to see that this country, as we struggle to ensure that it, go, it develops inclusively, mm -hmm. every person is able, to be, uh, is able to benefit and also to take part in national development. So we look at the various frameworks, but also emerging issues are usually also incorporated in the, the kind of issues that we usually look at when we are making assessments. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, how you people come out to come up with these, uh, you know, um, uh, findings. Uh, do you carry out vi field visits to actually ascertain what you finally, uh, you know, publish out there or tell the world? Yes, when you look at uh, what is usually captured in the sector budget framework papers, they usually uh, reflect what they have done in the previous period. They also reflect what they are planning to do they also reflect the kind of change they have caused among the people. Mm -hmm. They also reflect objectives and among other components. But of course we put a lot of emphasis in terms of the pledges that have been made like in the, for, in the previous financial year mm -hmm. in terms of what they are going to do. And then of course those are the ones that are usually subjected to tracking. And we physically do uh, these trackings. Like when you look at the report which has been presented today, mm -hmm. most of the issues we were citing that we did not see the budgets addressing were based on some of the, uh, the audits that have been conducted by the Equal Opportunities Commission. Mm -hmm. And of course, even when it comes to the plans of the issuing year, because apparently we are planning for the financial year 2018, 2019, we also look out for the issues that are captured in the various frameworks, because most of our frameworks capture very good commitments. But usually, sometimes we have a challenge of converting those commitments into tangible actions. So in terms of uh, identification and tracking, we do that. And where uh, less performance has been uh, reported vis-a-vis -vis our visits, we are able to know. 
and of course where we haven't been able to reach because usually the commitments are many but we usually pick uh, make sample we we use scientific sampling to see that our audits vis-a-vis -vis what is captured mm -hmm. are generally representative of what we usually report back to parliament okay thank you so much of course time is not our best ally but finally probably uh, this question and now who loses for example when, when government does, does not address this uh, gender equality issue like for example even government loses when you have when you plan for few people at the end of the day you face a bigger burden like apparently we are we are struggling in terms of taxes because we have few taxpayers reason being we have a big number of the population that has not been made economically active so when you implement inclusive growth and development a number of people are able to actively participate in economic development you can also look at uh, the social development sector programs whereby of course apparently we have some of our schools still performing poorly mm -hmm. even when you inject money into the young people and remember these are P p2 p6 p7 dropouts or people that have actually failed somebody can even fail to open up a bank account because there is a, a certain need that you didn't take care care of when some that person was still in school at a certain point in time so it is actually a chain link if inclusiveness is not given focus at the end of the day the country loses a lot mm -hmm. it can even cause insecurity whereby people feel they have been left behind as compared to some other regions of the country you can even when you look at just education like of course god gives talents to people yes. so it shouldn't be that you should be rich to access the best education mm -hmm. But of course, regardless of who the person is or where they come from, they should be able to access best education in that at the end of the day, they use their natural gift to make contribution to national development. Thank you so much, Mr. Jem. Of course, this is a, this is a topic that uh, we can continue discussing until the cows come back home. However, we have to leave it at that. But that has been Mr. Jemba Evans, and who is a Principal uh, Compliance Officer at Equal Opportunities Commission. And we've, of course, we've been talking about how Parliament has actually scored in as far as um, gender equality is concerned. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We shall definitely uh, hear from you some other time. News tonight will now take a short break, but we shall return with much more. Do not go away. Stay tuned. The process of trying to harmonize. Welcome back. We now turn to business where electronic recruitment into the public service has started. 6,100 fresh graduates are competing for 100 vacancies recently advertised by the Public Service Commission. The exams are being held at the Faculty of Computing and Library Services at Makerere University, Kampala. We have details. They log on, they do their questions within one hour. After they are finished, they send the results and the marks appear on the screen for them without the intervention. 6,100 fresh graduates are sitting civil service entry exams by the Public Service Commission at the College of Computing and Library Services, Macri University. We raised this matter two and a half, three years ago with the head of state and he agreed to support the process. So today we are rendering accountability to the people of Uganda that the resources that was put at our disposal have produced this work. The chairperson, Public Service Commission, Justice Rafa Chan, Commissioners Benenya Mchivi, and Kabogu Zamsoke, and other officials at the Public Service Commission are supervising the exercise taking place at the College of Computing and Library Services, Macri University. Entry level positions. So any Ugandan is, a, is entitled to apply. These are not Makerere students alone. These are from all over the institution in the country. They applied and they were found suitable to do these aptitude tests and that's why they're all here, from all over the country. The principal, yeah. College of Computing and Information Services, Makerere University, Professor Tony Oyana says, the exercise is fast, solid, and corruption-free. Professor Tony Oyana held the Public Service Commission for making use of the university's technology like to ease the recruitment exercise. Okay. They have not had any issues because they are dealing with experts. 
So we have the te technical human capacity in this college. We have servers. Uh, when the, they designed their system, they had designed it on a small system. And the first two days, there were some issues. Our people came in right away and resolved the problem. So you can take it from me that this is the place where you can get first class service. Thank you. The Commissioner, Human Resource Management, Richard Onyomo, says initially there were over 10,000 applicants for the 100 jobs, but only 6,100 were shortlisted. 6,108 were shortlisted, and that is the number that is here. Now, because of the big numbers, uh, the, the policy at the Commission is that six people are supposed to be competing for one job, one vacancy. Now, if you're shortlisting so many people for a few vacancies, then we have to bring them for this exercise. Havimana Dewo, reporting for BC News, Kampara. Welcome back from that short break and this is News Tonight. Let's talk sport now and we'll begin with uh, football where Federation of Uganda Football Associations, uh, FUFA, has held draws for the 44th edition of the Uganda Cup due to kickstart on the 20th of January this year. Now, competition's department officials were conducted, who conducted the draws uh, and they were at FUFA headquarters in Mengo. Our sports reporter, Helen Barbara Jizamba, gives us more. Uganda Cup preliminary round of draws began with a procession of determining teams from the FUFA Big League, Uganda Premier League, and the regional teams who are set to square ties with whatsoever opponents drawn to in the competitions. FUFA competitions manager Aisha Nanle says draws were conducted with transparency with the presence of the media to avoid complaints from various club representatives. Nenga tugenda kuteke kemi pira timu zete geko kufanga habili muwikendi ya habili Mwizigenda kukuza nila round DNA ya timu zekaga mwenyamu Some of the delegates representing clubs appreciated FUFA with the way the session was conducted also shared their views about the draws uh, The draw, it has been fair on paper because we are playing a regional team but plucked on the pitch we have to wait for the results. Uh, you see those teams when, are, when they are playing at home, eh? you wait for the referee's final whistle to determine whether you have gone through or not. The draw has been fair. It has been a normal, a normal draw. And I think most of the officials from other clubs have been fully involved. Those from Uganda region, the CEOs of various clubs and whatever, we were all involved in this draw. Out of 64 clubs, 22 are from the regional league, 26 for a big league, while 16 from the Uganda Premier League. Some of the teams from the FUFA Big League are Nyami Tiobara FC, Synergy FC, Lira United, and Bukedea FC. Regional teams, Kachumbali FC, Butiaba Red Scorpion, Seta United, while in the Uganda Premier League there is Vipers FC, Express FC, Proline FC, among others. Currently, KCCFC is defending champion for Uganda Cup 2016-2017 season and has been drawn with Mara FC, with whom they play their first encounter away. For UBC, Helen Barbara Jizamba. And on to basketball now, where Uganda may not be a basketball talent exporting country, but it seems like the few that have scaled those hits, uh, like Claire Lamunu, uh, who currently is on scholarship in the U.S., must actually be impressive. Now, that is the factor uh, that uh, actually plays into uh, the fact that that's the, the, that's the reason why world-renowned Vienna McGagan is camped in Uganda to scout raw talent uh, to harness uh, through education. The future of Ugandan basketball may seem bleak with the sporter still at an amateur level. But now, beneath is a project which, if well supported, will reap dividends. Good news is that many far and wide have realized how talented Ugandans, especially girls, are and are now pursuing them. 
The latest and possibly most needed is American Vienna Margugana, who was inducted in the American Basketball Hall of Fame in 2011. Less than a year ago. Ah, yeah, we're new. Wow. We're new. We're holding the ball for the first time they crossed. Through her teammates for life project, Magugan has identified northern Uganda districts of Arua, Gulu, Kitgum, Soroti, Nebi and Pade for all talent to harness through education. I took a challenge even in that direction. I mean, I could have come in and take the, the cream of the crop out of Kampala, but that wasn't the mission. I wanted to go into the northern regions, in the deep in the villages, and find the girls that nobody would ever know about that may be pregnant by the time they're 14 and the cycle would just repeat. And so we went and we um, did a little bit of a survey. We toured my first couple trips through, up through Gulu, we were in Kitgum, we came back down through Sarodi, and um, we kind of surveyed where we could um, most be effective and take the needy girls and where do we really want to set up and establish our Teammates for Life Foundation. With the sights set on enabling education and talent explosion, Vienna targets girls at the gender age of between 10 and 12. These, she says, are easy to incorporate into the American education system, through which many great basketball players have blossomed. I've put girls in my own country to scholarship for, for basketball, and I know I could probably do it with your girls here because they're very talented. It's just that they don't have an opportunity. So I'm trying to create an opportunity for girls who need a lot of um, empowerment in your country because of your culture. They don't really get the fair shake, and I know how that feels. <laughs> so um, I've kind of been blessed, um, you know, God's place before me, the fact that I can put my passions together as far as a love for basketball and helping young women to be empowered and self-sustainable in their lives and maybe utilize their basketball talent to get them there. On the general progress of the game in Uganda, Vienna, who acknowledges talent aplenty in Uganda, advises adequate coaching courses to nurture players. I've seen the finals for the last two years of the men and the women. I always come around that time of year. And I'm, from a coaching point of view, because I've coached boys and girls at all levels, I see that even the men and the women, they have a lot of talent, but it's just that there's a lag in the system um, that the coaching here is not as um, prestige and not as knowledgeable as it is from where I come. The Team Met for Life project is a church-based program that also goes an extra mile of improving people's livelihood through drilling of boreholes and offering counsel. Vienna Magugan in that report, they are of course trying to help Ugandan basketballers scale uh, the hates. Let's remain with uh, bas basketball a little bit more. And uh, City Oilers uh, Basketball Club has moved to within one game of winning the 2017 league crown, with which will come an acclaimed owner of a record fifth consecutive crown. In Game 3, played at the MTN Arena Lugogo, City Oilers, are playing in the blue jerseys, did not even engage second gear, but still managed to win 52-46 against a Kampala International University Titans that looks guilty of stage fraud. Now, with Jimmy Enabu and Ben Komakech not performing to their utmost, Landry Ndikumana, James Okello and Thomas Drileba stepped up a gear for City Oilers. Now the two teams contest Game 4 on Friday with Kampala International University Titans aiming to avoid a clean sweep in their maiden final. And finally, let's look at uh, soccer, local soccer though, and the seventh annual Entebbe Holiday Boys, uh, Girls Football and Netball Camp has started at St. Joseph's Technical Institute, Kisovi. Now, our reporter, John Barnes Sentamu, is following up all the activity of the three-day tournament, which are being played at two venues. 
Holiday period in many areas like Entebbe is usually punctuated by sports competition, notable of which is the Entebbe Holiday Boys, Girls Football and Netball Camp. This camp is at St. Joseph's Technical Institute, Kisubi, with the organizer Shafiq Kako's optimistic objectives will be achieved. So we have many clients. That means the edition has been running well. That's why we have new teams that have not been participating since the edition started. Also, the, the, we have been, uh, also our old teammates have, been, uh, have joined us. So we expect this edition 7 to be more, more than uh, the edition 6. And I would expect also to see more talents and different talents from different areas and from different clubs. The tournament contested for by players aged below 17 years has attracted teams from across the country, including Fimbo Soccer Academy, Five Stars and Kampala Junior Team. In the opening game, Zake Senior Secondary School from Chotera defeated Kitara FC 1-0. John Banza, Sentamu, reporting. And we finally come to the end of news tonight, this Thursday, the 11th day of January 2018. It's been a pleasure having you on board. I am Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma. It has been an interesting night. I am Patricia Lokoma. Thank you so much for being a part of us. For now, we say good night. Good night.